Chapters 37 to 45 of the Book of Jeremiah from the World English Bible. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Jeremiah from the World English Bible, Chapters 37 to 45. Chapter 37 Zedekiah the son of Josiah reigned as king instead of Coniah the son of Jehoiakim, whom Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon made king in the land of Judah. But neither he nor his servants nor the people of the land did listen to the words of Yahweh which he spoke by the prophet Jeremiah. Zedekiah the king sent Jehuchal the son of Shelemiah and Zephaniah the son of Maseiah the priest to the prophet Jeremiah saying, Pray now to Yahweh our God for us. Now Jeremiah came in and went out among the people, for they had not put him into prison. Pharaoh's army was come forth out of Egypt, and when the Chaldeans who were besieging Jerusalem heard news of them, they broke up from Jerusalem. Then came the word of Yahweh to the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Thus says Yahweh the God of Israel, You shall tell the king of Judah, who sent you to me to inquire of me. Behold, Pharaoh's army, which is come forth to help you, shall return to Egypt into their own land. The Chaldeans shall come again, and fight against the city, and they shall take it, and burn it with fire. Thus says Yahweh, Don't deceive yourselves, saying, The Chaldeans shall surely depart from us, for they shall not depart. For though you had struck the whole army of the Chaldeans who fight against you, and there remained but wounded men among them, Yes, would they rise up every man in his tent, and burn this city with fire. It happened that, when the army of the Chaldeans was broken up from Jerusalem for fear of Pharaoh's army, then Jeremiah went forth out of Jerusalem to go into the land of Benjamin to receive his portion there in the midst of the people. When he was in the gate of Benjamin, a captain of the guard was there, whose name was Erijah, the son of Shelemiah, the son of Hananiah and he laid hold on Jeremiah the prophet, saying, You are falling away to the Chaldeans. Then said Jeremiah, It is false, I am not falling away to the Chaldeans. But he didn't listen to him. So Erijah laid hold on Jeremiah, and brought him to the princes. The princes were angry with Jeremiah, and struck him, and put him in prison in the house of Jonathan the scribe, for they had made that the prison. When Jeremiah was come into the dungeon house, and into the cells, and Jeremiah had remained there many days, then Zedekiah the king sent, and fetched him. And the king asked him secretly in his house, and said, Is there any word from Yahweh? Jeremiah said, There is. He said also, You shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon. Moreover, Jeremiah said to king Zedekiah, Wherein have I sinned against you, or against your servants, or against this people, that you put me in prison? Where now are your prophets who prophesied to you, saying, The king of Babylon shall not come against you, nor against this land? Now please hear, my lord the king, please let my supplication be presented before you, that you not cause me to return to the house of Jonathan the scribe, lest I die there. Then Zedekiah the king commanded, and they committed Jeremiah into the court of the guard, and they gave him daily a loaf of bread out of the baker's street, until all the bread in the city was spent. Thus Jeremiah remained in the court of the guard. Chapter 38 Shephathiah the son of Matan, and Gedaliah the son of Pasher, and Jukal the son of Shemaliah, and Pasher the son of Milkajiah, heard the words that Jeremiah spoke to all the people, saying, Thus says Yahweh, He who remains in this city shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. But he who goes forth to the Chaldeans shall live, and his life shall be to him for a prey, and he shall live. Thus says Yahweh, This city shall surely be given into the hand of the army of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. Then the princes said to the king, let this man, we pray you, be put to death, because he weakens the hands of the men of war who remain in this city, and the hands of all the people, in speaking such words to them. For this man doesn't seek the welfare of this people, but the hurt. Zedekiah the king said, Behold, he is in your hand, for the king is not he who can do anything against you. 
Then took they Jeremiah, and cast him into the dungeon of Melchijah the king's son, that was in the court of the guard, and they let down Jeremiah with cords. In the dungeon there was no water, but mire, and Jeremiah sank in the mire. Now when Abedmelech the Ethiopian, a eunuch, who was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon, the king then sitting in the gate of Benjamin, Abedmelech went forth out of the king's house, and spoke to the king, saying, My lord the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet, whom they have cast into the dungeon. And he is likely to die in the place where he is, because of the famine. For there is no more bread in the city. Then the king commanded Abedmelech the Ethiopian, saying, Take from thence thirty men with you, and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon, before he dies. So Abedmelech took the men with him, and went into the house of the king under the treasury, and took there rags and worn-out garments, and let them down by cords into the dungeon to Jeremiah. Abedmelech the Ethiopian said to Jeremiah, Put now these rags and worn-out garments under your armholes under the cords. Jeremiah did so. So they drew up Jeremiah with the cords, and took him up out of the dungeon. And Jeremiah remained in the court of the guard. Then Zedekiah the king sent, and took Jeremiah the prophet to him into the third entry that is in the house of Yahweh. And the king said to Jeremiah, I will ask you a thing, hide nothing from me. Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, If I declare it to you, will you not surely put me to death? And if I give you counsel, you will not listen to me. So Zedekiah the king swore secretly to Jeremiah, saying, As Yahweh lives, who made us this soul, I will not put you to death, neither will I give you into the hand of these men who seek your life. Then said Jeremiah to Zedekiah, Thus says Yahweh, the God of armies, the God of Israel, If you will go forth to the king of Babylon's princes, then your soul shall live, and this city shall not be burned with fire, and you shall live, and your house. But if you will not go forth to the king of Babylon's princes, then shall this city be given into the hand of the Chaldeans, and they shall burn it with fire, and you shall not escape out of their hand. Zedekiah the king said to Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews who are fallen away to the Chaldeans, lest they deliver me into their hand, and they mock me. But Jeremiah said, They shall not deliver you. Obey, I beg you, the voice of Yahweh, in that which I speak to you. So it shall be well with you, and your soul shall live. But if you refuse to go forth, this is the word that Yahweh has shown me. Behold, all the women who are left in the king of Judah's house shall be brought forth to the king of Babylon's princes, and those women shall say, Your familiar friends have set you on, and have prevailed over you. Now that your feet are sunk in the mire, they are turned way back. They shall bring out all your wives and your children to the Chaldeans, and you shall not escape out of their hand, but shall be taken by the hand of the king of Babylon and you shall cause this city to be burned with fire. Then said Zedekiah to Jeremiah, Let no man know of these words, and you shall not die. But if the princes hear that I have talked to you, and they come to you, and tell you, Declare to us now what you have said to the king, Don't hide it from us, and we will not put you to death, also what the king said to you. Then you shall tell them, I presented my supplication before the king, that he would not cause me to return to Jonathan's house to die there. Then came all the princes to Jeremiah and asked him, and he told them according to all these words that the king had commanded. So they left off speaking with him, for the matter was not perceived. So Jeremiah abode in the court of the guard until the day that Jerusalem was taken. Chapter 39 It happened when Jerusalem was taken, in the ninth year of Zedekiah king of Judah, in the tenth month came Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon and all his army against Jerusalem, and besieged it. In the eleventh year of Zedekiah, in the fourth month, the ninth day of the month, a breach was made in the city, that all the princes of the king of Babylon came in, and sat in the middle gate, to wit, Nergal Sherezer, Samgarnabo, Sarsechim, Rabsaris, Nergal Sherezer, Rabmeg, with all the rest of the princes of the king of Babylon. It happened that, when Zedekiah the king of Judah and all the men of war saw them, then they fled, and went forth out of the city by night, 
by the way of the king's garden, through the gate between the two walls. And he went out toward the Arabah. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued after them, and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. And when they had taken him, they brought him up to Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, to Riblah in the land of Hamath, and he gave judgment on him. Then the king of Babylon killed the sons of Zedekiah in Riblah before his eyes. Also the king of Babylon killed all the nobles of Judah. Moreover he put out Zedekiah's eyes, and bound him in fetters, to carry him to Babylon. The Chaldeans burned the king's house, and the houses of the people, with fire, and broke down the walls of Jerusalem. Then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive into Babylon the residue of the people who remained in the city, the deserters also who fell away to him, and the residue of the people who remained. But Nebuzadaran, the captain of the guard, left the poor of the people, who had nothing, in the land of Judah, and gave them vineyards and fields at the same time. Now Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, commanded Nebuzadaran, the captain of the guard, concerning Jeremiah, saying, Take him, and look well to him, and do him no harm, but do to him as he shall tell you. So Nebuzadaran, the captain of the guard, sent, and Nebuchadnezzar, Rebsaris, and Nergal Sherezer, Rabmag, and all the chief officers of the king of Babylon. They sent, and took Jeremiah out of the court of the guard, and committed him to Gedaliah the son of Ahikam, the son of Saphan, that he should carry him home. So he lived among the people. Now the word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah while he was shut up in the court of the guard, saying, Go and speak to Abedmelech the Ethiopian, saying, Thus says Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring my words on this city for evil and not for good, and they shall be accomplished before you in that day. But I will deliver you in that day, says Yahweh, and you shall not be given into the hand of the men of whom you are afraid. For I will surely save you, and you shall not fall by the sword, but your life shall be for a prey to you, because you have put your trust in me, says Yahweh. Chapter 40 The word which came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, after that Nebuzadaran the captain of the guard had let him go from Ramah, when he had taken him being bound in chains among all the captives of Jerusalem and Judah, who were carried away captive to Babylon. The captain of the guard took Jeremiah and said to him, Yahweh your God pronounced this evil on this place, and Yahweh has brought it, and done according as he spoke, because you have sinned against Yahweh, and have not obeyed his voice, therefore this thing is come on you. Now behold, I loose you this day from the chains which are on your hand, if it seems good to you to come with me into Babylon, come, and I will take care of you. But if it seems bad to you to come with me into Babylon, don't. Behold, all the land is before you. Where it seems good and right for you to go, there go. Now while he was not yet gone back, go back then, said he, to Gedaliah the son of Ahikam, the son of Saphan, whom the king of Babylon has made governor over the cities of Judah, and dwell with him among the people or go wherever it seems right to you to go. So the captain of the guard gave him food and a present, and let him go. Then went Jeremiah to Gedaliah the son of Ahikam to Mizpah, and lived with him among the people who were left in the land. Now when all the captains of the forces who were in the fields, even they and their men, heard that the king of Babylon had made Gedaliah the son of Ahikam governor in the land, and had committed to him men and women and children, and of the poorest of the land, of those who were not carried away captive to Babylon. Then they came to Gedaliah to Mizpah, to wit, Ishmael the son of Nethaniah, and Johanan and Jonathan the sons of Koreah, and Sariah the son of Tanhameth, and the sons of Ephi the Netophathite, and Gezaniah the son of Machathite, they and their men. Gedaliah the son of Ahikam the son of Saphon swore to them and their men, saying, don't be afraid to serve the Chaldeans. Dwell in the land, and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. As for me, behold, I will dwell at Mizpah, to stand before the Chaldeans who shall come to us. But you, gather you wine, and summer fruits, and oil, and put them in your vessels, and dwell in your cities that you have taken. Likewise, when all the Jews who were in Moab, and among the children of Ammon, and in Edom, and who were in all the countries, 
heard that the king of Babylon had left a remnant of Judah, and that he had set over them Gedaliah the son of Ahikam, the son of Saphan, then all the Jews returned out of all places where they were driven, and came to the land of Judah, to Gedaliah, to Mizpah, and gathered wine and summer fruits very much. Moreover, Johanan the son of Kareah, and all the captains of the forces who were in the fields, came to Gedaliah to Mizpah, and said to him, Do you know that Baalus, the king of the children of Ammon, has sent Ishmael the son of Nethaniah to take your life? But Gedaliah the son of Ahikam didn't believe them. Then Johanan the son of Kareah spoke to Gedaliah in Mizpah secretly, saying, Please let me go, and I will kill Ishmael the son of Nethaniah, and no man shall know it. Why should he take your life, that all the Jews who are gathered to you should be scattered, and the remnant of Judah perish? But Gedaliah the son of Ahikam said to Johanan the son of Kareah, You shall not do this thing, for you speak falsely of Ishmael. Chapter 41 now it happened in the seventh month that Ishmael the son of Nethaniah, the son of Elishama, of the seed royal and one of the chief officers of the king, and ten men with him, came to Gedaliah the son of Ahikam to Mizpah, and there they ate bread together in Mizpah. Then arose Ishmael the son of Nethaniah, and the ten men who were with him, and struck Gedaliah the son of Ahikam, the son of Saphon, with the sword, and killed him whom the king of Babylon had made governor over the land. Ishmael also killed all the Jews who were with him, to wit, with Gedaliah, at Mizpah, and the Chaldeans who were found there, the men of war. It happened the second day after he had killed Gedaliah, and no man knew it, that there came men from Shechem, from Shiloh, and from Samaria, even eighty men, having their beards shaved and their clothes torn, and having cut themselves, with meal offerings and frankincense in their hand, to bring to the house of Yahweh. Ishmael the son of Nethaniah went forth from Mizpah to meet them, weeping all along as he went. And it happened, as he met them, he said to them, Come to Gedaliah the son of Ahikam. It was so, when they came into the midst of the city, that Ishmael the son of Nethaniah killed them, and cast them into the midst of the pit, he and the men who were with him. But ten men were found among those who said to Ishmael, Don't kill us, for we have stores hidden in the field of wheat and of barley, and of oil, and of honey. So he stopped, and didn't kill them among their brothers. Now the pit in which Ishmael cast all the dead bodies of the men whom he had killed, by the side of Gedaliah, the same was who which Asa the king had made for fear of Basha king of Israel, Ishmael the son of Nethaniah filled it with those who were killed. Then Ishmael carried away captive all the residue of the people who were in Mizpah, even the king's daughters, and all the people who remained in Mizpah, whom Nebuzadaran, the captain of the guard, had committed to Gedaliah the son of Ahikam. Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, carried them away captive, and departed to go over to the children of Ammon. But when Johanan, the son of Kareah, and all the captains of the forces who were with him, heard of all the evil that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, had done, they took all the men, and went to fight with Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and found him by the great waters that are in Gibeon. Now it happened that, when all the people who were with Ishmael saw Johanan the son of Kareah, and all the captains of the forces who were with him, then they were glad. So all the people who Ishmael had carried away captive from Mizpah turned about and came back, and went to Johanan the son of Kareah. But Ishmael the son of Nethaniah escaped from Johanan with eight men, and went to the children of Ammon. Then took Johanan the son of Kareah and all the captains of the forces who were with him, all the remnant of the people whom he had recovered from Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, from Mizpah, after that he killed Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, to wit, the men of war, and the women, and the children, and the eunuchs, whom he had brought back from Gibeon. And they departed, and lived in Geruth Chimham, which is by Bethlehem, to go to enter into Egypt, because of the Chaldeans. For they were afraid of them, because Ishmael the son of Nethaniah had killed Gedaliah the son of Ahikam, whom the king of Babylon made governor over the land. Chapter 42 Then all the captains of the forces, and Johanan the son of Kareah, and Jezaniah the son of Hoshaiah, and all the people, from the least even to the greatest, came near, and said to Jeremiah the prophet, Let, we pray you, our supplication be presented before you 
and pray for us to Yahweh your God, even for all this remnant. For we are left but a few of many, as your eyes do see us. That Yahweh your God may show us the way in which we should walk, and the thing that we should do. Then Jeremiah the prophet said to them, I have heard you. Behold, I will pray to Yahweh your God according to your words. And it shall happen that whatever thing Yahweh shall answer you, I will declare it to you. I will keep nothing back from you. Then they said to Jeremiah, Yahweh be a true and faithful witness among us, if we don't do according to all the word with which Yahweh your God shall send you to us. Whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of Yahweh our God, to whom we send you, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of Yahweh our God. It happened after ten days that the word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah. Then called he Johanan the son of Perea, and the captains of the forces who were with him, and all the people from the least even to the greatest, and said to them, Thus says Yahweh the God of Israel, to whom you sent me to present your supplication before him. If you will still abide in this land, then I will build you, and not pull you down, and I will plant you, and not pluck you up. For I grieve over the distress that I have brought on you. Don't be afraid of the king of Babylon, of whom you are afraid. Don't be afraid of him, says Yahweh, for I am with you to save you and to deliver you from his hand. I will grant you mercy, that he may have mercy on you, and cause you to return to your own land. But if you say, We will not dwell in this land, so that you don't obey the voice of Yahweh your God, saying, No, but we will go to the land of Egypt, where we shall see no war, nor hear the sound of the trumpet, nor have hunger of bread, and there will we dwell, now therefore hear you the word of Yahweh, O remnant of Judah. Thus says Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, If you indeed set your faces to enter into Egypt, and go to sojourn there, then it shall happen that the sword, which you fear, shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt, and your famine, about which you are afraid, shall follow hard after you there in Egypt, and there you shall die. So shall it be with all the men who set their faces to go into Egypt to sojourn there, they shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, and none of them shall remain or escape from the evil that I will bring on them. For thus says Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, As my anger and my wrath has been poured forth on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so shall my wrath be poured forth on you when you shall enter into Egypt, and you shall be an object of horror, and an astonishment, and a curse, and a reproach and you shall see this place no more. Yahweh has spoken concerning you, remnant of Judah. Don't go into Egypt. Know certainly that I have testified to you this day. For you have dealt deceitfully against your own souls. For you sent me to Yahweh your God, saying, Pray for us to Yahweh our God, and according to all that Yahweh our God shall say, so declare to us, and we will do it. And I have this day declared it to you, but you have not obeyed the voice of Yahweh your God in anything for which he has sent me to you. Now therefore know certainly that you shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, in the place where you desire to go to sojourn there. Chapter 43 It happened that, when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking to all the people all the words of Yahweh their God, with which Yahweh their God had sent him to them, even all these words, then spoke Azariah the son of Hoshiah, and Johanan the son of Kareah, and all the proud men, saying to Jeremiah, You speak falsely. Yahweh our God has not sent you to say, You shall not go into Egypt to sojourn there. But Baruch the son of Neriah sets you on against us, to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they may put us to death, and carry us away captive to Babylon. So Johanan the son of Kareah, and all the captains of the forces, and all the people didn't obey the voice of Yahweh to dwell in the land of Judah. But Johanan the son of Kareah and all the captains of the forces took all the remnant of Judah, who were returned from all the nations where they had been driven, to sojourn in the land of Judah. The men and the women and the children and the king's daughters and every person who Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had left with Gedaliah the son of Ahikam, the son of Saphon, and Jeremiah the prophet, and Baruch the son of Neriah, and they came into the land of Egypt, for they didn't obey the voice of Yahweh, and they came to Tepanhes. 
Then came the word of Yahweh to Jeremiah in Tapanhes, saying, Take great stones in your hand, and hide them in mortar in the brickwork, which is at the entry of Pharaoh's house in Tapanhes, in the sight of the men of Judah, and tell them, Thus says Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, Behold, I will send and take Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will set his throne on these stones that I have hidden, and he shall spread his royal pavilion over them. He shall come, and shall strike the land of Egypt, such as are for death shall be given to death, and such as are for captivity to captivity, and such as are for sword to the sword. I will kindle a fire in the houses of the gods of Egypt, and he shall burn them, and carry them away captive, and he shall array himself with the land of Egypt, as a shepherd puts on his garment, and he shall go forth from there in peace. He shall also break the pillars of Beth Shemesh, that is in the land of Egypt, and the houses of the gods of Egypt shall he burn with fire. Chapter 44 The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews who lived in the land of Egypt, who lived at Migdal, and Taphanes, and at Memphis, and in the country of Pathros, saying, Thus says Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, You have seen all the evil that I have brought on Jerusalem, and on all the cities of Judah, and behold, this day they are a desolation, and no man dwells therein, because of their wickedness which they have committed to provoke me to anger, in that they went to burn incense, and to serve other gods, that they didn't know, neither they, nor you, nor your fathers. However, I sent to you all my servants the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Oh, don't do this abominable thing that I hate. But they didn't listen, nor inclined their ear to turn from their wickedness, to burn no incense to other gods. Therefore my wrath and my anger was poured forth, and was kindled in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem, and they are wasted and desolate, as it is this day. Therefore now thus says Yahweh, the God of armies, the God of Israel, Why commit you this great evil against your own souls, to cut off from you man and woman, infant and suckling, out of the midst of Judah, to leave you none remaining, in that you provoke me to anger with the works of your hands, burning incense to other gods in the land of Egypt, where you are gone to sojourn, that you may be cut off, and that you may be a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. Have you forgotten the wickedness of your fathers, and the wickedness of the kings of Judah, and the wickedness of their wives, and your own wickedness, and the wickedness of your wives which they committed in the land of Judah, in the streets of Jerusalem? They are not humbled even to this day, neither have they feared, nor walked in my law, nor in my statutes, that I set before you and before your fathers. Therefore thus says Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, Behold, I will set my face against you for evil, even to cut off all Judah. I will take the remnant of Judah, that have set their faces to go into the land of Egypt to sojourn there, and they shall all be consumed. In the land of Egypt shall they fall. They shall be consumed by the sword and by the famine. They shall die, from the least even to the greatest, by the sword and by the famine. And they shall be an object of horror, and an astonishment, and a curse, and a reproach. For I will punish those who dwell in the land of Egypt, as I have punished Jerusalem by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. So that none of the remnant of Judah, who have gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there, shall escape or be left, to return into the land of Judah, to which they have a desire to return to dwell there. For none shall return, save such as shall escape. Then all the men who knew that their wives burned incense to other gods, and all the women who stood by, a great assembly, even all the people who lived in the land of Egypt, in Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that you have spoken to us in the name of Yahweh, we will not listen to you but we will certainly perform every word that has gone forth out of our mouth, to burn incense to the queen of the sky, and to pour out drink offerings to her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of food, and were well, and saw no evil. But since we left off burning incense to the queen of the sky, and pouring out drink offerings to her, we have wanted all things, and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. When we burned incense to the queen of the sky, and poured out drink offerings to her, did we make her cakes to worship her, and pour out drink offerings to her without our husbands? 
Then Jeremiah said to all the people, to the men and to the women, even to all the people who had given him an answer, saying, The incense that you burned in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem, you and your fathers, your kings and your princes, and the people of the land, didn't Yahweh remember them, and didn't it come to his mind? So that Yahweh could no longer bear, because of the evil of your doings, and because of the abominations which you have committed. Therefore is your land become a desolation, and an astonishment, and a curse, without inhabitant as it is this day. Because you have burned incense, and because you have sinned against Yahweh, and have not obeyed the voice of Yahweh, nor walked in his law, nor in his statutes, nor in his testimonies, therefore this evil is happened to you, as it is this day. Moreover, Jeremiah said to all the people, and to all the women, Hear the word of Yahweh, all Judah who are in the land of Egypt. Thus says Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, saying, You and your wives have both spoken with your mouths, and with your hands have fulfilled it, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we are vowed, to burn incense to the queen of the sky, and to pour out drink offerings to her. Establish then your vows, and perform your vows. Therefore hear the word of Yahweh, all Judah who dwell in the land of Egypt. Behold, I have sworn by my great name, says Yahweh, that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Egypt, saying, As the Lord Yahweh lives. Behold, I watch over them for evil and not for good, and all the men of Judah who are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by the famine until there be an end of them. Those who escape the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt into the land of Judah, few in number. And all the remnant of Judah, who have gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there, shall know whose word shall stand, mine or theirs. This shall be the sign to you, says Yahweh, that I will punish you in this place, that you may know that my words shall surely stand against you for evil. Thus says Yahweh, Behold, I will give Pharaoh Hophra, king of Egypt, into the hand of his enemies, and into the hand of those who seek his life, as I gave Zedekiah the king of Judah into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, who was his enemy and sought his life. Chapter 45 The message that Jeremiah the prophet spoke to Baruch the son of Neriah, when he wrote these things in a book at the mouth of Jeremiah, in the fourth year of Jehoiakim the son of Josiah king of Judah, saying, Thus says Yahweh the God of Israel to you, Baruch, you did say, Woe is me now, for Yahweh has added sorrow to my pain. I am weary with my groaning, and I find no rest. You shall tell him, Thus says Yahweh, Behold, that which I have built will I break down, and that which I have planted I will pluck up, and this in the whole land. Seek you great things for yourself? Don't seek them, for behold, I will bring evil on all flesh, says Yahweh but your life will I give to you for a prey in all places where you go. End of chapters 37 to 45